Hey guys, Madraibrid here, and I often hear people say that they want to get better at Dawn of War, but they don't know how, so I'm making this video as a first part of a 10 part series on how to become better at Dawn of War and to teach some basic strategies along the way. Today's part will be basic tips, tricks, and learning the game. The other 9 parts will be team specific guides on how to learn to play your favorite team more effectively. Let's start the same way each of your matches will, with your opener. Your opener is exactly what you do when the match starts. An opener is extremely important in Dawn of War since it dictates what you're able to do as opposed to what your opponent can do. Are you going to make three scouts and keep resources to make power generators and listening posts for an early all-in economy, or rush a chapel barracks and make sure that you have enough resources for an early force commander? Your opener can completely change the style of the match. Let me show you one of my favorite openers with the orcs and at the same time, show you the importance of hotkeys. First, I'll show you my opener done with the mouse only. I start with my Gretchen squad selected, click Build, click Du Bois Hut, the orc's basic infantry building, build it, then I hold Shift and build a Wog banner, queuing up his action so when he finishes building Du Bois Hut, he'll go straight to building the banner. Once we've told the Gretchen what to build, we go to our headquarters and tell it to build two Slugga squads, one Gretchen squad, and the Gretchen infiltration. When my Sluggas come out, I split them up and have them capture separate points, and as soon as Du Bois' hut is finished, I have it make a big mech, and that's my opener. I highly recommend you make your control groups after the buildings are queued up and your Sluggas are being made, when you have a few seconds of downtime. In brief, a control group is when you select units or buildings, hold control and click a number on your keyboard, so that every time you click that number without control being held down, it selects that building or unit for you. Now that you've heard me explain it, here's the opener in real time. Build it right up, I'm not doing anything. We'll do it. A bit slow, right? Well, here's where hotkeys come in. A hotkey is where you click a button on your keyboard to automatically activate a button in-game rather than taking the time to use your mouse. This is necessary if you want to become a better player. Never underestimate just how important hotkeys are. By mousing over any button in-game, you can see what button on the keyboard will click it. As an example, watch my opener being performed with the use of hotkeys. We'll do it. It only took 4.28 seconds, as opposed to with a mouse when it took 7.10 seconds. It may not seem like a ton, but saving that many seconds means that my sluggas are out faster and thus taking points faster. All the time you save by using hotkeys on everything really starts to add up. The time you save is often the difference between reaching the strategic location at the same time of your opponent and fighting there, and taking the point a full 3 seconds before they even get to it, so you're fending off the opponent while also getting more requisition than them, so you can reinforce more than them, winning the fight, pushing them back, forcing them to work with less resources, and eventually winning the match. Now that you've heard me ramble on about openers and the wonder of hotkeys, let's move on to early game. Early game is a lot about knowing your own team, your enemy team, and acting accordingly, so most of it will be covered in the team-specific guide, but I can tell you that the majority of games are decided in early game. Often, a match between two players who really know what they're doing will end in less than 15 minutes and will be decided with Tier 1 units. It's still quite common for the match to actually finish in mid-game with Tier 2 units, however, it is more likely that it'll already be decided by 10 minutes in. Things to keep in mind for early game are not to turtle up like in some other RTSs. You really need to get yourself out there and get map control. Know what's going on, keep making units and upgrades, keep capturing points, and do some damage here and there where you can. Don't give your opponent too much of a chance to build up. Keep in mind that this game is all about map control as you need map control to have a stronger economy. If you know what your opponent is doing, know what you are doing, are good at unit control, and have the stronger economy, you've already won. On to mid-game. Mid-game usually happens about 12-ish minutes in, but there is no set time. It's about when both players are getting into their tier 2. This means there are better upgrades, a few new infantry units, usually specialty ones, and vehicles come onto the field. 
In mid-game, the land barriers are a bit more set in stone, where the points you have now and the points they have aren't going to change nearly as much as in early game. It's going to be more of building a sizable and effective strike force, usually backed by a vehicle, and hitting a point to take that one point instead of two or three squads all taking undefended points in different spots at once. By this point, you should for sure have listening posts on all of your points and probably have upgraded them too. Depending on your team, you're likely also going to have at least three power generators for upgrades or vehicles. At this stage in the game, unless you know your opponent has very few generators, you should be getting a unit or two that specializes in killing vehicles to eliminate the new threat, as most tier 1 infantry in the game will get steamrolled by early vehicles. Tier 2 is also when most teams get their second commander. If you manage to get a significant amount more land in early game than your opponent, you might be able to fund getting both commanders, a vehicle or two, and a decent sized force with a complementary infantry force. If you find yourself in this situation, don't let it go to waste. Attack with it as much as you can. If you need to pull out, then pull out and hit a less defended spot, but don't let up. Keep them on their toes, always cleaning up messes rather than building up forces. Every time they have to rebuild, that listening post is even more resources down the drain that could have gone into making their army as good as yours. Let's move on to late game. This doesn't happen very often, but it does happen so you should be prepared. Late game is generally what happens about 18 minutes in when players are going into tier 3. Tier 3 is usually when every unit but their ultimate unit is unlocked and nearly every upgrade is available. This is where that powerful economy really comes into play, as you want to build every powerhouse you can to trample the opponent. By this point in the game, the borders of who owns what is almost completely set in stone until the final fight when one player finally destroys the opponent's army and moves on to their base to finish them off. Fighting usually takes place in wide open areas, with two giant death balls of players, entire armies clashing together to see who can come out victorious. Your listening posts will all likely be fully upgraded during this tier, and you'll have gotten all of your generators, so you can rebuild your army and reinforce pretty quickly, leading to a long and bloody battle. Late game is usually decided by who has more resources and can afford to go into all-out war for longest without running out. Although, if the player with less is able to get the right units to counter what the opponent has and properly control those specific units to move around and attack what they need, they can overcome the odds, so don't count yourself out if you have less points, and don't assume you have the game in the bag just because you have a bigger army. Unit control with the right units can always beat a death ball on a move. Finally, on to end game. End game almost never happens. When it does, it's about 22 to 24 ish minutes in. This usually happens when there's a real stalemate where neither player's armies seem to be able to take out the other one, and no real damage is being done that doesn't get recovered before the next fight. End game is tier 3.5 when you research your final upgrade that unlocks your ultimate unit. If you ever get into endgame, the general strategy is to get your ultimate unit as fast as possible and attack with everything you've got and absolutely never let up. The second a squad dies, have another one already queued up in your barracks ready to come out and get onto the battlefield. There isn't much strategy here that wasn't in late game, other than to get that final unit and rush the opponent. That's my overview of general strategy in your everyday match, regardless of team. Keep these things in mind while you practice tonight, and take it one step at a time. Getting better can take a long time, so make sure to stick with it. Also, stay tuned for the next time when I'm doing team-specific guides for every single race, where I'll be giving more tips, tricks, and general strategy. Until next time, have a nice day. Thanks everybody for watching the video all the way through. This is my first Dawn of War strategy video, so I'd love to hear in the comments section if I was clear about everything. In the meantime, check out some of my other videos. On the left there is my creepypasta playlist, where I read and rate video game creepypastas. If you just want a let's play to watch or listen to, how about you check out that playlist on the right of Tactics Ogre Knights of Lotus. If you want to keep up with me, check out the description if you haven't before. I have links to all my social media stuff like Facebook, Twitter, Steam, and even my own forum where I list every game I plan to let's play. I hope you guys enjoyed, and until next time, have a nice day.